little secret. There ain't nothing like Monday morning at 7 a.m. Keep it between us. No zoo down here at the boat ramp. Welcome to the Wolf Den. Check out this mess. Whew, I'm, I'm, I'm stacking the beers up here like cordwood. Man, I hope you enjoyed that uh, little Jetty Wolf moment there. And, uh, whew, that was a tough day, but now yeah, we caught fish. Had to go to the float rig to catch fish that day. Uh, that was just, what, yesterday. What you see here is a lot of work in pro progress. I'm moving some float rigs around and then you gotta re, you know, you gotta re-tie every time you're messing with a float rig. Oh man, look at it, it's all going everywhere. Every time you mess with a float rig, you know, you gotta re, Thread it on, redo it, put the stopper knot, the whole nine yards. So that's what I'm doing because I'm actually swapping some stuff around here. Damn, mosquito. Um, so I'm moving some stuff around and hold on. I got line all wrapped around my beard here. But the reason for this little pause intermission after the uh, after the jetty wolf moment is say it ain't so Dave found a rod that he loves for float rig fishing and it ain't an ugly stick I'm ugly you know I know it I'm ugly through and through. I always say, cut me and I bleed ugly. But, ever since the invention, I call it the cheapening of, the ugly stick, and them making these GX2 models, oh my God, they got such a spine in them. 
Uh, there's dead spots in, in some of the blanks. Uh, what I mean by that is, you know, you bend the rod, right? And if you were to cut the section, this section here to here and here to here, you're going to cut them. There'll be two sections. When I mean dead spots, when you bow the rod, this is straight, this is bowed, this is straight. I call that dead spots in a, in a, in a rod action. I just don't like them. That's the reason I'm all tiger rod, baby. I'm all tiger. And I, I needed one ounce float rig rods. One ounce. Let's see. Where's a one ouncer? Here's a one ounce. If you've been out on my boat, you've seen, we've been using these a little bit lately. Because when you're in shallower water, when you're not in high speed current, you can get away with a one ounce float. With a one ounce lead. Here is a seven foot ugly stick they just don't make anymore. You, I mean, you don't find these in stores. It's all GX2, GX2, GX2. This dude here has a nice clear coat over the blank. It's just got, it doesn't have these super eyes, I can say, on the GX2. They're all about the eyes. But it's got, where well, I got too many things going on here. It's got the ugly stick parabolic bend to it. You know, there's no dead spots in this seven foot medium light or so rod here. I mean, look at that. I don't see any dead spots. There's a complete curvature that's even with the entire rod. I'm telling you, I'm going to Academy Sports, Walmart, wherever I just happen to be strolling through, and I go over and grab a GX2, and it has such a spine in it that some of the rods, that if you go like this, it just goes, and snaps over, snaps over. It doesn't want to bend. Now, I can say, honestly, that when I go to, when I used to buy these, I preferred to actually go to a store and get them for $29.99 because I would check and see how straight they were. Okay, was there a spine? Was the curvature good? I mean, I'm kind of that way where... Yeah, if I'm spending $29.99, I'm also going to check this stuff out big time. Okay? So you can't really find these anymore. I wanted to use these for possibly something else. And this is, I was using some of these. I only had two of these uh, to use as seven foot, one ounce float rig rods. <clears throat> so the moral of the story. I'm walking through Academy one day, and I start looking at some of their brand of rods, right? Damn. I mean, I got, I got, I got shit going everywhere here, folks. Okay. I start looking at their brand of rods, the Classic Edition. As cheap as you can get, really. I mean, one double-footed guide, all the rest single-foot guides, right? But they're black, they're nice, they're probably not going to corrode up. I actually put this grip on here because I want to, I, I, I kind of hate cork, okay? I like the feel of something else, and I just put this wrap on here. But look at you got... A little cork, an okay real seat. It's got a little place in here where you can touch the, the blank. Blank and then just a little cork butt on it with no protection. I mean, no protection on the end. It's just a little cork cap. But here's the deal. For $14.95, this, this here, it's whippy. Here's what I do with a rod. 
When I'm float rig fishing, this is what I want out of a rod. I don't want to pull the hooks on that trout. Okay? I mean, it's whippy. And you know what the funny thing is? It's a hollow fiberglass blank. Good God, whatever happened to a God dang fiberglass rod? Well, thank you Academy Sports and Outdoors because for $14.95, you just gave me the perfect, which it's been working. We used them yesterday. We've been using them, using them. I've had a couple. I went and got two more. Light as a feather. Don't weigh nothing. Has my bend. Look at that, baby. No dead spots. No spots where right here, it wants to like stay straight. Okay, granted, this thing could probably snap like a damn dried out willow branch, okay? But for $14.95, do I care? No, probably. I mean, I could have expensive rods. People are going to snap them all damn day. I have an old cheapy ass rod and then, you know. But, there you go. I take these and, oh, I got too much stuff in one spot here, folks. I take these and I match them up with a 7 to 1 gear ratio, which I'm loving this 7 to 1, man. I match this up with a 7 to 1 Daiwa Strike Force magnetic controlled over here size reel that when I put 15, 20 pound braid on, I mean, it holds a buttload. Smooth drag. Handles aren't as big as I'd like them to be. No super clicker here. None of the niceties. Strike Force is just a generic Daiwa type of reel. But, look at that. Man, that thing don't weigh nothing. So, this is a little notification. You've caught Dave. Dave's going to tell you about it. You've caught Dave not using an ugly stick. And the reason being is they're not making my old favorite, really. They're not making my old favorite anymore. There's, a, there's changes going on, folks. It's called the cheapening of America. You know? I don't know. I don't know what the deal is. But, yeah, this little, this little Chinese rod right here will do me just fine. So, that's what I wanted to share with you. I was feeling a little guilty. Feeling a little guilty. But, I'm using these just for my one ounce rods. They have such a good bend to them. When you got a nice trout hooked up, redfish on here, got a nice super high speed reel. That's what you want to put together. And um, I already turned a customer of mine onto it. He was just visiting and he wanted a, a cheap rod to go out and, you know, to go out and uh, do some float rig fishing. And he was highly success successful while he was here after I taught him everything I know. Right? <laughs> and the funny thing is, they also do make these in 7 foot 6. What happens to a fiberglass rod the longer it gets? Well, usually um, down here they get quite thick and round. But that's not all that bad of a deal because the fiberglass doesn't weigh anything. I mean, this rod doesn't weigh anything worth a hoot. I can catch the same fish on a $14.95 rod as I can with a $295 rod when it comes to the float rig. Because let me tell you something, float rig makes everybody equal. Makes everybody equal. Everybody has stands the exact same chance. But it's all the little things you quickly, quickly, quickly learn. Rod placement. Do I hold my rod over here? Do I, how do I steer my float? Do 
Do I hold back on it, let that current that's coming grab my float and shoot it off this direction? Is that where the fish are at? Yep, that's where the fish are at. Bam! I catch them. My float goes down. I reel, reel, reel. Light line. Super fast reel. Bam! I connect real quick. I swing up. I let them play on that rod tip. Let them play and play and play. Okay? So, that's the light tackle, super light tackle version of float rig fishing. So, I just thought I'd throw that in there. Like I say, I was feeling a little gilly. It's hot as holy hell in the wolf den here. I don't want to turn air conditioning on. I got to just get a fan going. Oh, oh, wait a minute here. The next review. Here it is. Sneak peek. Sneak peek. Sneak peek. This is the next review. What is this? I mentioned it a couple videos ago in a little intro. I'll be doing a review on this. I ain't going to tell you what it is. I'm going to be doing a review on it. Not necessarily a review. What do I call them? Show and tell. All right. Till next time, I'll see you on the Jetty Wolf. Whoo! Man, it's getting hot in Jayville. All them people that don't like PBR, good. That's more for me, but it's...